Hey guys, today's video is different once again. Not a makeup video. Obviously, I have none on my face because I don't want to waste it. It would just get ruined because I feel like this will be a pretty emotional video for me to make. I'm just going to be telling you my story. Um, six pregnancies now, starting from when I was 18 years old. Um, every pregnancy was so different, how long each pregnancy was, and then just the experiences were fully different. I'm not going to go into crazy detail with each pregnancy because this video would be like a full day long. Um, so if you do want to hear more about um, the details of each pregnancy, maybe the testing that I did, um, just, I don't know, just you can ask me questions, you can talk to me. So first pregnancy, got pregnant in July of 2020, 2009. I was 18 years old, playing volleyball at the time, I kept it a secret, stupid, stupid, stupid thing, don't do that. Tell your family. Um, I didn't tell my coaches, my family obviously. I kept it a secret and continued to play volleyball, which I wish I didn't do. Um, I ended up telling my parents that I was pregnant in probably October. Um, I went in to see a doctor in November on a Thursday. I heard the heartbeat, everything was well. Played in a tournament Friday and Saturday, and I lost the baby Saturday night into Sunday morning. Um, I fully, f completely, 100% blame myself and my decisions and actions during that time for the loss of that baby. Um, but at the same time, I have completely accepted the fact that if that baby had survived, I wouldn't have married my husband, I wouldn't be where I am right now, like everything happens for a reason and I have come to accept that. That was kind of a hard thing to overcome, but I have now. I regret it. I wish more than anything that I had stopped playing volleyball, that I didn't try and hide it, that I wasn't a stupid teenager. But then if, I don't know, things, everything happens for a reason. And as sad as it was and as, as hard as that trial was to go through, I lost that baby at 19 weeks. My cousin had to like unlock my door at our apartment because I was just in the bathroom bleeding. I had no idea that I had been going into labor. It was just, it was very shocking. I, I look back and I feel like I was completely in shock holding this tiny little baby in my college apartment bathroom. Um, my cousin drove me to the hospital at like two in the morning. I called my parents and they drove all the way down and met us there. It was really, really traumatic thing for a teenager to go through. So that baby boy, he was a boy, I named Simeon. So if you hear me refer to Simeon's pregnancy, that was Simeon. So I was 19 weeks. If you didn't know, up to 20 weeks pregnancy or gestation, it's considered a spontaneous abortion. I hate that term. I heard it in the ER when I was there, spontaneous abortion. like. In my mind, that was like a nasty thing to call it. The word abortion just pissed me off, really. It still does, like calling that. I wish they would change that term. But anyway, that was a spontaneous abortion because it was up till like before 20 weeks. I was 19 weeks pregnant. Um, anything after 20 weeks is then considered a fetal demise, fetal death, a stillbirth, which I have had quite a bit of experience in that post 20 week area. So many things happen in each pregnancy. It's just a lot to talk about. So I'm sorry if you feel like I'm speeding through this or like talking about it like casually. I have coped with everything emotionally. So I'm at a place where I can talk like this about it. If you're not there yet, don't worry, you will. Like if you've experienced something similar, it is so, so, so hard to talk about, but I, I've, come to a place where I can finally talk about things, um, at least to a camera. I'm not so sure about people. Um, I met my husband a month later. We went on our first date. I don't know. I guess I was ready to date. I'm glad I was ready to date or started dating again. Also, I was single during or when I had Simeon. I was single and I was prepared to be a single mother. I'll just, I can go into that in a different video, but so then I met my husband in December, we were married in July and got pregnant right away um, with Jace. Jace is my now almost six year old boy. I got pregnant right away because I have always wanted to be a young mom. I wanted to be like 
I wanted to be done having kids by the time I was 30 so that I could still be young and energetic and fun like throughout their high school years. So yeah, we had Jace right off the bat. Um, but he always, always, always measured small, like one percentile small. We couldn't figure out why because my husband and I are both quite large people. So that was weird, but I mean, we were keeping a close eye on him, doing stress tests every week once we hit like 25 weeks where they monitor you for like an hour a week, um, monitor the baby's heartbeat. The 36 week checkup, doctor basically said, pack a bag and go check into the hospital, we need to get him out. And that kind of scared me. I was only 20 years old at the time. My husband was out of town, it's just like a scary time. Um, he was small, we tried to deliver naturally, it just would not happen. I wouldn't dilate past a four. So we had to get Jace out at 36 weeks. It wasn't kind of an emergency C-section. Um, late at night, April the 6th of 2011. So really quick, Simeon's actual due date was April 7th of 2010. I really, really, really didn't want Jace to be born on April the 7th because April 7th was kind of my day for Simeon. Like, I, I wanted them to have their own days. It's weird. All six pregnancies, I remember the day that they were supposed to be born and I remember the day that they were actually delivered and those dates I kind of set aside and remember them on those days. April 7th was Simeon's day and I didn't want Jace to be born that day. So when they told me at like 10.45 p.m. on the 6th that we were just gonna have to go take him out um, surgically, I was all for it because I was done like, it was, it was hard. If you've been in labor, it's hard. Um, so we took him out that night, late that night on April the 6th, which turns out to be the day So Jace was tiny and really, really, really jaundiced. He was four and a half pounds, which that's small for me. Okay, so that was Jace's pregnancy, my second pregnancy. Third pregnancy, I got pregnant. Um, had Jace in April. I got pregnant in February the next year. Um, no birth control, nothing. We're just like when we get pregnant, we will, you know, because we always wanted a big family. I have, I'm one of four and today, to this day, I still wish I had more siblings because I love them and I just, they're, they're so fun. If you have a lot of siblings, I envy you. My mom is one of 19, yeah, and my dad is one of seven. So I just, like all the aunts and uncles and cousins, I just love, you know, so I want my kids to have that. So I got pregnant in February. Um... <sighs> things felt normal, I did miscarry that baby at between six and seven weeks, so in March, and that was pretty tough. Um, I, up until that point, I didn't think that I would have issues. Maybe Jace was like a one-time thing, maybe something was off and my next baby would be totally normal. When I had this miscarriage, this early miscarriage, the, the type of miscarriage that most women experience, or a lot of women experience, I was kind of like, maybe something's up, but again, we wanted a big family, we want a big family. And so, I lost that baby in March. My fourth pregnancy, I got pregnant in October. So later that year, I got pregnant. And this was with Cree, my daughter. I need to do actually a different video with her. I went and saw some midwives and I fully regret it, nothing against them, but the whole experience was just different and I regret a lot of things that weren't done. Um, with that whole pregnancy. She was small, just like Jace, measuring and like super tiny. And for some reason, they never told me I needed to be hooked up to stress tests like I was with Jace. They never told me, and I didn't, like I thought I should, but I just was trusting them. I was only 22, still young, still putting my whole life in their hands basically, and I just trusted what they had to say. I wish I didn't, um, uh, because 26 weeks later, I lost her. I started um, feeling little cramps, called in, and they said, wait a day um, and see if it happens, and call me tomorrow and see if it's still there. So that was kind of weird to me. So I waited a day and f was still feeling cramps. I went in, and she had no heartbeat. Like, I'll never forget that moment, laying on the table, and the lady running out to go grab the other midwives to come and tell me that she had no heartbeat. You have no idea how excited I was to have a little girl. Like, Cree was 
a very, very, very hard time for me. She was a stillbirth. A still we buried her next to my grandma. Um, with Simeon, I was taken to the ER. I took, I delivered the baby in my apartment and I took the baby with me to the ER and they sent it to pathology to get testing done and stuff. And it was just never brought up that, hey, do you, what do you want to do with the body? Do you want to bury it? Do you want to, like, it was never even brought up to me. So I didn't even know that was a thing. I thought they just, I just gave his body to them. And I, like, I didn't know that, like, the options that I had, I guess. So maybe that's another reason why I want to make this video is you have so many options if you have a stillborn baby or a spontaneous abortion, whatever you want to call it. Um, but at 19 weeks, Simeon's little body, he was a baby. He had arms, legs, fingers, ears, like boy parts. I struggled with that for a long time that I just gave his body to the hospital and they did what they what they did with it. I have no idea. Um, so that was really hard for me to come to terms with, um, but I finally accepted it just two months ago. Like, I finally have coped with it how I needed to when, when the last pregnancy happened, but I'll get more to that in a little bit. So with Cree, we buried her. We had social workers come in. We have her, like, death certificate. Um, it's, she was a baby who died, and they treated it that way at the hospital, and I was so grateful. A really bad experience at the hospital because Again, I can do a full video on her. The midwives didn't want me to get an epidural, so I listened to them. But instead, I was pumped up with morphine and so many gross things that made me feel so dark. And so... It was really bad, but I looked at that little baby girl and I was, like, angry. And I wish I didn't feel that way. Like, I regret feeling that way looking at her. But, like... A photographer came in, we got photos, little hand and feet molds, like her, her little dress she was wearing. So the hospital itself was really, really great and really helped in that aspect of it, like the, like the mourning with it and the dealing with it aspect. If you are going through something like this or, or have been, you would know that, like, you have so many options on how to cope. I know of a woman who just couldn't deal and had the baby and, and had the hospital deal with it and never, and that was it. Like no name was given, nothing. And that's completely fine. Like if that's how your way of dealing with it, that's 100% perfect for you, you know? But you just have so many options so that it's just want, oh, come on. I really want people to know that, that there's so many resources at, that you can have to help cope. Okay, a year later, I got pregnant. I wanted to get pregnant because I wanted to give Jace a sibling before he got too old. I got pregnant in March with Zion. He is my just barely turned two-year-old boy. He was just like Jace, um, always measuring small, like Jace and Cree. For some reason, my body doesn't give a baby what it needs. We cannot figure it out why. It's just how it is. So my really, this point, my only option is honestly get pregnant and monitor and hopefully the baby makes it far enough along to take out and let it grow outside of my body. Like that's, that's my only option. If you have similar experiences, please let me know any tests you've done, anything you've done. But uh, to my knowledge, I've done every possible test already. And it's just kind of, that's just my situation, you know? So with Zion, I, um, this was always going to be a C-section. I knew in my mind, we're just going to do a C-section for the safety of him. And we went in at my 37-week appointment. Doctor said, I think we need to get him out. He, they would grow, grow really slowly, but then kind of around 35 weeks, they start to just really, like, plateau and kind of stop, almost. And that's kind of when the doctors like just want to pull them out you know so c-section with jay is zion it was so it was just nice it was planned for 7 a.m i got there at 7 30 he was born at 7 a.m like 705 and then it was just like a pleasant 
thing. No, not an emergency C-section rushing around and crying and everybody freaking out. Zion was definitely my best pregnancy and delivery. He wasn't jaundiced. He was five and a half pounds. So bigger than Jace. We were stoked. Like all was well, you know. I got on birth control because I wanted to just give myself a break um, for a year, which might not be that long, but it's pretty long to me. I got pregnant in June this past summer, and again, baby was small, but I thought it would be like Zion, where we could just watch him. Um, he was a boy. At this point, with Zion, I had moved over to see a specialist. After the midwives, I couldn't, like I started seeing an OB who specializes in high-risk pregnancy. He's amazing. Things like were great with Zion, so I was ready. I got my birth control out in May and got pregnant ASAP. So very fertile over here. Um, but I went in at 20 weeks to get some fetal photos done. Like if you've heard of fetal photos, it's just like a studio spa where you go in to get 3D pictures taken. No doctor, no nurses, nothing. It's just an ultrasound tech taking pictures. It's a really cute little spa-like um, thing. And there was no heartbeat. I hadn't been cramping. I hadn't felt anything at all like what I had felt with Cree and with um, Simeon. Is something looking scary? So... I, I can't see a heartbeat. I'm going to have you just turn for a couple minutes and just lay on your side and then I'm going to come back and we'll just try it again. Just okay. see if we're just getting like a funny angle or something like that. I'm going to have you do, yeah, I'm going to have you do that. We're just going to pause this. I'm going to have you turn. So I was completely taken off guard, completely shocked. We were, just, we were out to lunch. We did a cute little family day of shopping out to lunch and we're going to end it with our little cute photos. So that was a shocker. I thought maybe she messed up. I was hoping that she just didn't know what she was doing. Um, she, poor girl was pregnant as well and had to tell me that she couldn't find a heartbeat. So I go straight, drive towards my doctor, which is like 45 minutes away, and he is out delivering babies at the hospital, so he can't see me. So they send me straight to the hospital. I go to get an ultrasound um, there. And there is no heartbeat. And it was complete deja vu. I couldn't believe it was happening again because for some reason Zion was perfect. Well, as perfect as like I feel like it can get with me. And so I was so shocked. And I had to deliver the baby just like I did with, with Cree. Um, but this time I got an epidural so that I could have a somewhat pleasant experience and so that I didn't feel this nasty darkness inside me like I did with Cree, because I really regret that. And I delivered him on October the 12th. Um, we gave him a name. Now this is a really, really personal choice. I chose not to bury Monson because he was about the same age, same size as Simeon, and I didn't, I didn't do anything with Simeon because I didn't know I could. And I would have felt so guilty. Like, it was this huge like, debate with me and my husband, like, like, we just could not decide what we wanted. Did we want to bury him with Cree, or did we not, like, did we want to, I don't because then we would feel bad for Simeon, or did we not want, like, I don't know, it was really, really, really hard to decide, but I did not want to have Monson and Cree buried together, and have Simeon treated like nothing back in 2009. So we chose to let the hospital, after all his testing and stuff, let them um, take care of the body. It was a really hard, it was like a lose-lose situation. Like we felt guilty if we buried him for Simeon, but then we felt guilty if we didn't. But ultimately we decided to not bury him, but decided to get a new um, headstone, I'll insert a picture, with all three of them so that we could go, so that we could go to the grave 
and visit them and like have all three of their names there. I felt like that was the best decision for us. So, um, so that's my story. I didn't want to make it like a sob fest, but I can't get through it without <laughs> sobbing. So, um, I wanted to do this video one for like a personal diary or a video diary so that I can always remember these dates and these what happened if for some reason like my journals burn down or I lose them or something I don't know I just wanted to have it out there for me and my posterity um but also I just I feel like I can help I don't know I just feel like I might be able to help somebody like I've been pregnant a ton so I mean I guess I could help newbies <laughs> but like I don't know, I just, I want to let women know that they have options. Don't let people make you feel guilty if you don't want to give the baby a name or don't want to bury the baby or or if you, if, if you as a person just, you just need to let the hospital deal with it, you need to know that that's fine. Um, and I know hospitals have like their counselors come around social workers come talk to you everybody copes differently and if you need to give a 19 week old baby a name or a 20 week or a 26 week old baby a name and make it part of your family then that is totally fine too this is totally out there but I 100% believe that I that I will have the opportunity to raise them and to be their mother and for my kids Zion and Jace to have them as siblings that's how my husband and I have been able to deal with it is because we fully believe and know that they are our sons and our daughter you know speaking of children hi buddy what you doing? Mm. Yeah. Thank you. Mm. Love you. Um, so like, we, my kids, well he's too young. Okay, hold on, look, mommy's talking. But Jace, our oldest, he fully knows about Simeon, Cree, and Monson, and he prays for them every night that they're doing okay. And he, he knows that he has two, he has an older brother and a baby sister and a baby brother who we will get to see one day. So it's just kind of, there's so many ways to deal with it. You just have to find what is right for you and your family. <laughs> what are you doing? Mm. You're looking at yourself in the mirror. He's so handsome with your mop hair. So, okay, I guess that's the end of this video. Um, so just remember, there's no wrong way to cope unless it's illegal. <laughs> don't do that. But, I don't know, I hope that this story, I don't know, I hope it connects me with some people who, who have gone through the same thing and just, I don't know, it's, it's sad when somebody comments and says, I know what you're going through, but at the same time, it's comforting to know that there's, so many other people who deal with it so um feel free to comment down below and talk to me because i really do love that i hope this really helps at least one person deal with this lame stuff that goes on but thank you again for watching and i'll talk to you guys soon bye